<coughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Free Lunch Comic News episode numero... We don't care. Nine. No! Nine. We're almost at double digits in shows, which is pretty impressive that we're able to keep going this long. Hey, Chris so, Fazakis. Hello, everybody. Hello, Fasakis. Chris Fasakis, I got a question for you. Are you related to the people that produce TV shows? I was watching TV last night, and there was a Fasakis production company, and I was wondering if that was a relative of yours. If it is, you really should work on getting a job with them. Hey, Chad. Just saying. So, we're about to start the show. Today's show, we have news. comic news, as always. We got the convention report. Um, and comic watch. Books, comic watch. Books that are on the shelf this week. And month. the free lunch menu. Yes. Do we have a story time with Uncle Matt this week? Uh, we could talk loosely about things. Yeah, but, let's do that. All right. We don't have a top ten, so. That's true. Top ten will be next month. Yeah. So, there we go. So, we're going to have that stuff coming at you, and uh, we're going to start the show in microseconds. Microseconds. So, and you, you and, you and what we're going to be able to do is, if you're on your mobile device, yes. you can actually ask a question live, and we'll pop you on the live feed show, and we'll address your Maybe question we'll on air. Story time with Uncle Matt. We'll do a Q and A section. Ooh, that might be dangerous, but okay, let's try yeah. it. You can ask Matt anything you want about comic books. Literally anything you want about comic books. Yes, anything. Or about himself, you. And to see now you're pushing it. You okay. Anything you want to know. Slacking. I'm not slacking. I'm sharing the podcast. Yeah, Tim is uh, Tim is here as well. Oh, I thought he said stacking. No. Yes, he's cup stacking. He's doing the cup stacking. Well, that too. That's at the office. All right, ready to go, boys? Hit it. It's Free Lunch Comic News coming at you. The Free Lunch Comic News back at you again for another episode. Little issues here with the audio, but I got it figured out. Yay! Now we're ready to go. All Matt's right. here, Tim's here, Mark is here. We're here with a whole new show. I was episode looking for a fourth nine. guy. <laughs> Did you look around? I'm like, <laughs> some other ghost. There's, there's a there. ghost in here? Kicking around an idea of doing a paranormal investigative show. Yeah. <laughs> Pitching it to CBS. Sure. Sounds great. Just kidding, JK. Uh, so, we have tons of stuff for you today. It is the day after Halloween. Hope everyone had a nice and fun Halloween. Hope everyone got the candy they wanted. Oh, yes. Uh, we got uh, the comic news coming at you next. Convention report, which will give you all the cons going on in the month of November. We got a story time with Uncle Matt and a Q&A session where you, the fans, can get in touch with us through Facebook Live as you're doing the show. And you can uh, ask Matt any question you want. About comic books, and he will you answer can, it. You can ask honestly, other people stuff, too. Honestly and kindly, he will answer it. I will. Honestly and kindly. Always kind. And then uh, after that, we have the comic watch, and then, of course, as we end every show with the free lunch menu, where we tell you everything that's going on over at Free Lunch Studios. Right over at Simsbury or Terrafield, Connecticut. Yes, if you our want gracious to be sponsor and overlord. So first off, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll tell you a little bit about the Monday Night Jam, which just happens to happen at the Free Lunch Studios in Terrafield. So we'll be back with your comic news in just a bit. This is the Free Lunch Comic News. <clears throat> All right, everybody watching live, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Mark just recorded the intro for the show. And yes. we're cutting the and promo. We record, we record all mistakes. We don't take anything out of here. Yeah, it is live. We do we do, try it to live. do it as live as possible. So. You guys get the pure, unfiltered. I had an portion. issue at the beginning where I stumbled over the raising of the things. And it stays on the show because we don't stop. No, we just keep going. We won't stop. Don't stop. So right now we're we're playing the promo for the Monday Night Jam, which is a <coughs> a program that I run at the studio, uh, the Monday Night Jam for kids, which is for kids. Uh, 7 to 13. Hi, Wendy. Uh, we run that from 5 to 6 every Monday night. And then from 6 to 8.30, we run the Adult Jam, which is a lot of fun. Uh, this past week, we did the uh, the Great Candy Swap. Tim, this was your first time being part of that. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. It's, was it's, it's always a good time. 
And Mary, my sister, is like the queen yeah. of like. The... We've renamed her. We don't call her the government. We don't, you know, we call her the kingpin now. Yeah. And it's great because she brings other kids in and allows them to take part. Hey, oh, there's Tim glasses. Jensen. There's Tim Jensen. Ah, oh, the commish. The glasses are great for some distance, but not up close, and because we're reading the news. Oh, gotcha. Save it for the question segment. <laughs> Full of Jean Bifogles, that we're saying? No. No, I don't need bifocals. I just... Right, hello, everybody. Now I have to wear a tie, you know? It just doesn't seem I right. Don't think you, I don't think you own a tie. Yo, I do. You own one tie? I own many ties. Many ties. Yeah. Don't. I'm sure some of these people have seen me dressed up. My ties, maybe, but that's what I mean. And I only had two trick-or-treaters. Two. I had none. Two at my, at my place. Tim never gets any. No, yeah. Well, Tim lives in, a, in the woods. In a Tim, li place. Tim lives on Wayne Manor, and there's it's like a gated mansion. Yeah. If they can make it over the gate, they deserve the yeah, Snicker King, bars. Yeah. They yeah. give away king size bars, With but there's the no and everything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the bat flying around. Yeah, I give him credit. So the Monday Night Jam, we do that every single week. There are people that will text me and they ask, hey, is there a Monday Night Jam tonight? If it's Monday, then the answer is yes. The only times we don't do it is if there's inclement weather. Um, it'd be nice to be able to offer it live every mm -hmm. once in a while. Maybe kick, like turn it on at like 8 o'clock and let people kind of dial in. Uh, Google Hangout. Yeah, we could do that too. Yeah. yeah. We're, working on, we're working on some things. We're working on some things. We are because, um, yeah. Technology's coming to Free Lunch Studios. Yes. Yes. All right, we ready to jump back in? We're ready and waiting on you. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. All right, so we're going to start with an intro, and then we'll turn it over to the comic news. And you want to go first, then we'll do sure. Marvel, DC, we'll do and then I'll do the uh, image stuff? News from Marvel, DC, and IDW, I believe, right? Or image. 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 Yeah. Those random ones. All right, let's get this ball rolling. Here we go, kids. So stay tuned. Our Facebook Live viewers, we are coming right back into the show. We're not leaving you at all. <clears throat> Welcome back to Freelance Comic News. It is now time for the part of the show that this is all named after the news. And I'm going to start. So here we go with some news out of the folks from Marvel. Over at CBR, they're reporting uh, Punisher Dressed for War. Matthew Rosenberg outlines Frank Castle's Marvel Legacy mission. The Punisher has never been timid with his firepower. Still, give the man a bigger weapon and you can trust he'll find a bigger target. So goes the premise of The Punisher number 218. On November 15th, Frank Castle dons the War Machine armor and heads off to battle. Writer Matthew Rosenberg and artist Guyu Villanova. Kyo Guyu. Guyu. G U I U. I apologize if I butchered your name. Will Nova introduced Legendary Soldier to Marvel Legacy and a classic character pulling the strings of war. Uh, they were able to talk to Matthew Rosenberg, field striping his typewriter, and asked him a few questions about the upcoming story. Uh, Rosenberg is quoted as saying he thinks the biggest thing and maybe what makes this so fun will be the who the Punisher is at his core. Is at his core. Frank Castle more than. Every other character in the Marvel Universe does not change. He remains the Punisher when he fights Kingpin, and a Punisher when he fights Daredevil. At the end of the world, in space after death, as a monster, he remains a constant. So taking a persona and what that means and changing things around him, that feels exciting to him. There is no greater force in the Marvel Universe than Frank Castle's desire to punish people, and they're going to give him the means to do that on a bigger scale. So doing that, but making it still feel like the Punisher and feel fresh all at once, that's the challenge and the opportunity, Rosenberg says. We have the, this idea, one that I think seems like the logical next step to Frank's war, and they want to make folks feel comfortable and shocked all at once. It should be fun. If you want more about that interview, you can go to, I believe it's marvel.com, has the full interview. You can check that out. And next up will be Matt. He's well, got some DC news. Well, actually, no. I wanted to just add on, like, so that that news bite that's not related to the platoon no, series no, that you have flagged here. Um, I know that you've got this uh, flagged for Comic Watch. Yes. Um, okay. That uh, nice, nice pick. I commend you on that. So this is an altogether 
different series. This is an actual Punisher story that they're gonna that Marvel Legacy takes over. So that this is not That's part of separate. That? Okay. All right. Cool. All right, man. Tim's got the DC news next. DC, DC news next. All right. So here's a little article talking about uh, the debut of Red Death's crazy Batmobile in the newest uh, metal series. Um, <clears throat> if you thought the Batman who laughs bizarre Batmobile was impressive, you ain't seen nothing yet. Ooh. The Red Death's Flashmobile gives the dark multiverse's Joker slash Batman hybrids <clears throat> a ride a serious run for its money. Oh, by the way, uh, spoilers apparently for uh, Justice League number 32, which is the uh, latest book for Dark Knight's metal uh, Bats Out of Hell storyline. Right. Okay, thanks for letting everybody yeah. know. Sorry, so heads up. No, Tune that's out good. For like four minutes. Three minutes? Three minutes. Yeah. Introduce so for your folks who aren't, um, uh, if you want to go to the CBR website where the Star Wars comes from, mm -hmm. and you guys can see that's the actual oh, wow. Flashmobile right there. That's crazy. And then if you want, it, don't want to spoil it for yourself, go to the website, but just cover your eyes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Introduced in Justice League number 32, the latest chapter in Bats Out of Hell, uh, DC Comics' current Justice League slash Dark Knight metal crossover arc, Batman, the Red Death's dark multiverse vehicle, of choice is more than just a stylish way for the evil Bruce Wayne to ride around the streets of Gotham City. As he explains to Earth Zero's Barry Allen, not only he, does he have experience killing flashes, he's figured out how to tap into the speed force to fuel his diabolical twisted Batmobile. Ooh. That sounds Ooh. awesome. It does. That does sound pretty cool. What's more, the Red Death has applied his extra dimensional technology to more than a, a single machine. When Barry taunts that he can outrun even a speed force fueled Batmobile, the Red Death res responds by unleashing a fleet of similarly equipped vehicles on the crimson-clad Justice Leaguer. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Uh, whether he's controlling them himself or if they're being piloted by his Earth's versions of Robin, Nightwing, Batgirl, etc., remains to be seen. But one thing is clear. He's determined to notch another speedster's death on his belt. Spooky. Ooh. Ooh. And we have a nice little uh, talk with uh, Liam Sharp, Who's the artist? Very talented. Book. Very talented. Ooh. If there's one thing uh, that I get a little freaked about, it's drawing cars. Uh, he discussed how he approached the, the Flashmobile a little bit. It was the one thing that I couldn't draw as a kid, but when I got the brief about what this car was going to look like, I got excited. I really enjoyed Mad Max Fury Road and what kind of feel. As a kid, uh, I was also pretty into custom cars, so it wasn't like just drawing a normal car, it was totally different. I couldn't yeah. wait to start and had a blast. I think it shows. It was a lot of fun. It definitely got really cool looking if you see on the it's website. It's very cool. And or the, when you get the book, it's a really intense looking car. The Mad Max influence is very clear. You can definitely, yes. totally, yeah. definitely see that. Really yep, cool. absolutely. Uh, he says, I love the Red Death's mask. I tried to echo it in the grill of a car. Mm. I was hoping that you could see a DNA thread through the design. The, uh, the Wonder Woman one, called the Merciless, is fun too because he's literally a knight. I wanted to actually go more barbarian with him. Yeah. But uh, but DC editorial asked me not to mess around too much with the design. Uh, of course. <coughs> DC doesn't want anything to do with a barbarian. Uh, they're there? publishing him right now. They're the only ones. They're the only ones <laughs> publishing him right they now. They don't want anything to do with anything like that looks barbarian. <coughs> Basically what they just said about that. <coughs> That's weird. Well, weird city. Yeah. So if anyone we wants long that comment. latest Bats Out of Hell series. We left a long comment on there. What's that? I see it. Justice. I don't want to interrupt him, though. Oh, he's done. Justice League number 32 on the shelf now. Yeah. Now he's, he's done. done. Yeah. Uh, Angie, if you could present your question later on, we'd love to address it. <laughs> That'd be awesome, because we're not going to be able to go back and see it. It's, I'll read it to you guys. Hang on. Okay. Uh, she, the she, 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 she'd love to know our opinion on the Flash's Justice League movie suit versus the, the suit Stupid. that he has in the... Okay, so there you have it. <laughs> the suit on the TV show. All right. The suit on the TV show is way more like the comic book. I do have the some suit in the movie is just cool. All right, we'll get back to that, Ange. So, yeah. Ange is our, our satellite reporter uh, yeah. coming to us from Texas. Texas, yeah. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Image Comic News. Uh, Image Comics uh, to publish an anthology to raise money for the Las Vegas shooting survivors. Um, 
they announced yesterday, actually, uh, that they're going to do a Where We Live anthology. All proceeds from the anthology will be donated to the GoFundMe, benefiting the survivors of the Las Vegas mass shooting that claimed 59 lives and left over 500 in injured. The anthology is being curated by J.H. Williams III, Wendy Wright Williams, Scott Alley, Dave Stewart, Eric Stevenson, a publisher of Image Comics. So you've got a lot of different uh, talent from all over the industry, which is pretty awesome. J.H. Uh, Williams is a big uh, big guy over at DC. Um, mm. you got Scott, Scott Alley, who I don't know if he's with Dark Horse still, or and I know Dave Stewart's done a lot with Dark Horse. So this is pretty nice, and obviously mm. Eric Stevenson over at Image. Um, Image's press release included a statement from Williams, who spearheaded the project. It says here, uh, on October 1st, uh, 2017, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, suffered the worst mass sh shooting in modern American history. Um, it felt like something needed to be done to help in a unique way. A, a, a week passed before the shock cleared enough to decide that I wanted to help create a benefit book to uh, project for the survivors. Uh, with this book titled Where We Live, our hope is to not only help those in need in the, after this tragic event, but also to somehow start a real conversation on avenues for preventing this sort of violence from happening again in the future. Uh, the anthology will include a variety of artwork meant to start an ongoing conversation about compassion in society, mental health stigmatization, gun violence, and the importance of fostering conversations about the above it issues. Excuse me. The anthology will also touch on the history of the Second Amendment that allows American citizens to own firearms, as well as its impact on gun owners and the role of the NRA in the United States. Uh, so the, the Las Vegas shooting left 59 people dead and over 500 injured. Um, they talk a little bit about one researcher has estimated the combined cost of the victims' medical bills could exceed $600 million. That's crazy. Uh, this comes at a time where the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services has announced a reduced 2018 enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act, as well as a 90% uh, funding reduction uh, to the marketing budget for the ACA. Uh, this is the first announced comic book work from the former Dark Horse Comics Editor-in-Chief, Scott Alley. Okay. Since he is, was announced uh, as leaving that publisher in late September, how come we didn't report on that? Uh, in I think October, it was very well kept hush -hush. I, I guess so. In October 2015, Allie became embroiled in a controversy recording, uh, regarding a reported history of misconduct. Mm -hmm. That's why we didn't report about it. <laughs> well, yeah, wow. Information on where to donate and how to send submissions for the Where We Live anthology will be announced soon. Uh, we're going to dig a little deeper uh, for that other... Of that other uh, news bite there. Um, very interesting stuff. So um, there you have it. That's going to be from Image Comics. And we'll look into that too. And what we can do is we can share maybe the link for yeah, the yeah, GoFundMe and again, our yeah. news site. Uh, oh, cool. And other news, just to let you know, if you like watching the, the Facebook live feed of the Free Lunch Comic News, we're also on YouTube. We are. Yeah, and it's the pure, unfiltered, uncensored uh, show. Yes. So we have the podcast at the yes. Geek as part of the Geekonomics uh, podcast uh, network. Podcast network, and then we also have you know the live feed, which shows up at Free Lunch Comic News Facebook page. I know yes. it's on mine. It's on the Free Lunch Studio Facebook page. Yes. Um, and you and your friends are more than welcome to share it. We love it when you share it. And yes. now it's also on YouTube. Wow. Wow. Technology spread, spread like crazy. So like I, a virus, even. I think that covers us for the news. It does. We're gonna take a quick break. Talk a little bit about Thirsty Thursday. Oh, that's which tomorrow. Tomorrow over at the yep. Launch Studios. Yep. And I'll be back with my favorite part of the show, the convention report. We're gonna tell you about all the conventions going on around the world, uh, across the country, or across the country. Sometimes we'll get a worldwide unless, in there. Unless you get a worldwide in there, Max. And, 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 I kind of, I kind of looked. I kind of looked. I, I, I edited it this time to make sure there was no around the world stuff. So. All across these great United States. Just a quick drive over to Australia. Yeah. All Let's right, cool. Jump. So we'll be back with that in just a bit. It is the Free Lunch Comic News. Stay tuned. Are these just comic conventions? <coughs> what? Are these just comic conventions that you guys have like, narrowed it down to? What, say it again? Are these just comic conventions? Pretty much. Pretty that, yeah, it's, it's from a database, yeah. Your YouTube stars. 
Yes. Me too. So right now, our uh, our faith our faithful Facebook watchers, we are um, putting the promo for Thirsty Thursday, which happens every week on Thursday nights, as you could gather, from seven to nine thirty. Uh, sometimes we'll go on D and D nights. We'll go from seven to ten. But that's the third Thursday of the month. Mm. But uh, all the other Thursdays are just straight up regular drink and draws. Straight up now, drink and draw where they want to walk. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. See, that's something that the mm. podcast listeners don't get. A little yeah. bit of hand jiving and, and dancing over of, there. A little bit of, uh, who's that? Uh, Paula Abdul. Oh, is that who you were? Yeah. Oh, I didn't get that. Paula, the pops my Paula Abdul. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up, my baby. <clears throat> so Thirsty Thursdays, it's another drop-in event that we offer in Simsbury, Connecticut mm -hmm. over at Free Lunch Studios. We love it. It's a good time. I figured out what my favorite drink is. You who? No, uh, for my favorite alcoholic adult beverage. Wow. Yeah. How old are you now? I know. It took this long. <laughs> it took twice as long as everybody else. What is it? It's um, the hard soda, the grape hard soda. It's good. It doesn't it's taste. Good. It doesn't yeah. taste like alcohol. It's really good. You ever yeah. tried a John Daly? No, I don't know what that it's, is. Uh, sweet tea, vodka, and lemonade. Oh, yeah. it's real good. Yeah. So when you make it yourself, you're making yeah. your concoction. They, do that, they do sell it as well. He is, they do. Yeah, yeah. He is selling it as a John Daly, like a Arnold Palmer. Okay. His, yeah. It just tastes like an Arnold Palmer with a little bit. It's a little bit harder than that. Yeah. Drinks named after guys. Mm -hmm. Tom Collins. The drink. Okay. It sounds classy to like say a name and yeah. get a drink and like yeah. Yeah. I'll get a John Daly and really like, just like a bunch of lemonade. Yeah. I'd like a Vi Sakahima. <laughs> That's the only one I know because I used to do like five cent Tom Collins is at uh, Huskies when I was going to Utah. Is that right? Can you give me a Victor Shakapopoulos on ice? Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, or a Dr. Dr. In, Pepper. Just comes in a huge shoe. Yes. That's awesome. So, thirsty Thursdays. Get your uh, get your creativity yeah. and your favorite drink flowing uh, over at Free Lunch Studios. Oh, you haven't gotten that sponsored by a bar or something by now. I've contemplated doing it at a bar. That'd be a good idea. Glad it. You should talk to McLaren's right in some very. Well, you know who wants me to do it is uh, the ch the Cambridge House. Mm, that'd be cool. It would be cool, but they're already there. Would they pay an entry fee? That's a place downstairs too. That is not a bar. They have a bar. They do, but their plan is no. They're not. That's not a bar. It's a good night. It's or you know nice. what's even better? Uh, local breweries. That would be pretty cool. That would be. We'll have them sponsor. Well, Cambridge a House is a brewery, I think. Yeah, but they did each week with a different brewery. That'd be they fun. Featured. They that would be like fun. A anniversary or something. Mm. Hey, Jody Klim is watching. Ooh. Is oh, that? and Nick. Jody. Uh, I used to work with Jody in a different life. Oh. Nick's a buddy. Wow. Nick was watching before. Wow. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We're going to jump right back in. We're going to do the... It's uh, time for our favorite part where Matt gets to do the convention report. <coughs> the oh, convention report. Yeah, I didn't understand. bring my drink in here. Where is it? No, I didn't bring one. No, it's and an apple. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. All right. Apples work. Switch it Hey, welcome back to Freelance Comic News. Hey, I heard we were back. We are back. Oh, look at, look at, look at that. And everybody's there. Science. Hey, Jim O'Reilly's watching. Get to work, Jim. It's now time for my favorite part of the show. Listen to Matt talk over top of rap music. It is time for the convention report. Hit it. Uh, uh, uh. uh. <laughs> All right, it's going to start off right away. We're going to go across to the other side of the country. Uh, there's a show this weekend, actually starting Friday. In Ooh. Seattle, Washington, it's the ICAF, the International Comic Arts Forum. Uh, no, fancy. no venue given, so sorry. Well, it's um, a forum, so it's all over the place. It's all over. Um, Saturday only in Wilmington, Delaware, it's the Underground Comic Con. Don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Underground. <laughs> Speak easy. Uh, cool. November third through the fifth in Tucson, Arizona. The Tucson Comic Con. I have an address here of 5120 South Julian Drive. So if you're listening in, in uh, Arizona. Is that some guy's house? 
Yeah, go ahead on over for three days. So it's a full out party. <laughs> Just hang out at this place. This is uh, <laughs> great. Oh, I got that wrong. The Seattle show is more than three days. It's two. Oh, no, it is three days. Sorry. What is this? This goes to the fifth? Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, November 4th. It's the Green Bay Comic Book Convention. Ooh. If that's really on Sunday, are anybody going to go? Is anybody going to go to that? I, I know they're all watching football. Well, the Packers game. Yeah. Also, November 4th. Well, if the, the Packers are paying the way, then they're not the room. Yeah. Well, it didn't, uh, didn't he just get hurt? The Aaron Rodgers is hurt. So yeah, he's anyways. hurt. What's the point? Whoa. November 4th, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the Vegas Valley Comic Book Festival Ooh. at the Las Vegas Clark County Library. Ooh. Hey, you know what? What? Library shows are pretty awesome. They are, because they're in libraries. Yeah, Tim just did one. Yeah. Tim There's just did one there. in Waterbury. It was crazy. It was crazy. They have books there. He said some kid, take them for free. Some kid like rammed him up on stage. They like they jumped him on stage and yeah. pushed stuff I got over. Jumped. He got jumped by an children. eighth grader. It was crazy. It was, was insane. It a, was it a female? It was a turf a war. Does it off the <laughs> library? Oh. It's pretty awesome. Oh. Uh, Roanoke, Virginia. It's the Roanoke Valley Comic Con. That's November fourth mm, as well, and that's good. at the Tanglewood Mall. Uh. Also November 4th, Morgantown, North Carolina. It's the Morgantown Comic Con. That's at the at the uh, Colette Street Recreation Center. Oh, that's cool. Now, also in Seattle is the Short Run Comics and Art Festival, November 4th. That's kind of cool. Washington's got a lot going on. November fourth and fifth. Happy to join, man. Tacoma, Washington, Jet City Comic Show at the Tacoma Convention and Trade Center. Nice. Same weekend, Akron, Ohio, Acro, Acro, Akron Comic Con. It's at the Quaker Station at one thirty-five South Broadway Street. LeBron James will be there. He will. I don't know. He's from Akron. You better be careful. You start saying stuff He's like from that. from Akron. Who they're going to come over here. They're going to be like, oh, I heard of LeBron Who knows? James. He might be there. Who knows? He's from Akron. He's in Cleveland. <laughs> That's the same town, basically. It's just like a suburb of Cleveland. November 4th and 5th as well. A lot of comic shows this weekend. Austin, Texas. Mondo Con. Mondo. Mondo like chili. It's at the Marchese Hall of... Uh, Marchesa Hall of... Uh, Hall and Theater. Mondo no need no badge. Same weekend. Huntsville, Alabama. Rocket City Nerd Con. I like that I name. Like that. I like that name. Wow. Ooh, we've got like a divided, rock. divided cast here. I like the name. I like something named after a rocket. I think that's cool. Yeah, rocket. Well, rocket part's cool. cool. The nerd part is cool. Yeah, I don't like that. Part. That could change. November fifth, Rockford, Illinois. It's the Rockford Comic Book Convention at the Holiday Inn at seventy-five fifty East State Street. State. All they do, all they do is talk about <clears> the <throat> show Rockford Files. A lot of people don't know what you're talking about right now, but thanks. No problem. Hey, Mark, November hey. November 5th, Albany, New York. Hey, guess what? I'll be there. You will be at the Albany Comic Con. If you say hi, we'll say hi back. Yeah, you it's even a, know who we are. It's the Radisson Hotel, Albany. I don't even know who we are. Well, you'll have your I'm going to point at you and out. scream your name the whole time. You'll have your free lunch shirt on. I don't have one yet, so I don't have anything. I was kind of thinking of not wearing the shirt that day. Well, should I go shirtless that day? Or just not wear the uniform. Oh. Steve Canaris, this is for you. A big shout out to my friend down in Baltimore, November 5th. It's the Lutherville, Timonium, Maryland uh, area. It's the comic book and non sports card show at the Radisson Hotel, North Baltimore. Wow. That is the 5th, my friend. I will say, I mentioned that you're not wearing a shirt and a lot of thumbs up one happened on the, yeah. oh, on the Facebook Oh, thanks. For major luck, right? Uh, November 5th, Daytona Beach, Florida, Daytona Beach Comic Convention at the ICI Center. Also November 5th, what? Albany, New York, Albany Comic and Toy Show. It's the same show, it's just two different names. Oh, and there's the trick, folks. <laughs> I learned that because their websites, they have two websites. They do? But it's for the same thing. Okay. Uh, November 10th and 12th, we've just jumped to next weekend, Durham, North Carolina. It's the North Carolina Comic Con. Gabby, if you're listening, I hope uh, I hope you can get to that one. That's at the Durham Convention Center. Dear Gabby, what a great talent she is. Uh, Durham, home of the Bulls. November 10th through great the 12th, movie. Kansas City, Missouri. It's the Kansas City Comic Con and Kansas City Convention Center. Ooh. Oh, take a deep breath. November 10th through the 12th, Providence, Rhode Island. It's the Rhode Island Comic Con. Who is it going to be at Rhode Island? <laughs> hey, seriously. Rhode Island Convention Center. 
That'll be a packed one, folks. I'll be there on the Saturday. Are you really? Yep. I'm going with my boys from Angry Geeks. Be sure to say hi. I'll stop by. You'll be at the Simple Comics booth? Yes, I will be with Chris Fazekas. Are you the special guest at that booth? I will be the special guest at that booth. Oh, can't wait. I'll be the special guest running the booth on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Well, Chris is on buying stuff. You know, well, he'll, no, he's got to work. He's, he's working Friday, and Tim Tim's going to be working at the uh, Hartford Open Studio Tour that same weekend. Oh. So if you're going to stay local to Connecticut, you can go and uh, visit the free lunch booth over at uh, the... Are you staying over that weekend? Or are you driving back and forth? I don't feel... I, I, I don't, uh, don't want to go back and forth. How about that? Okay. Are you staying over? You're only going for one day. Why well, are you I was going to say, if you're, going, if you're going on Saturday, we could ride together. I'm not, so that's great. You're not going Saturday? <laughs> no, I'll already be there, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> November 11th, South Bend, Indiana. It's the South Bend Comic Book Convention. No Notre Dame Con. No uh, location given. Also the same day, Wheaton, Illinois, it's the DuPage Comic Con. At the DuPage County Fairgrounds? Or DuPage. Or is it DuPage? I think, I'm pretty sure it's DuPage County. DuPage? I don't know. If you look at it there, DuPage it County? sounds like Illinois. Oh, maybe, I don't know. DuPage? DeKalb? I don't know. South Illinois. Tell us what it's DuPage. about. DuPage. Have you? Yeah. All right. November right. 11th you know? and 12th. Illinois. Usually on cops. Mount Clemens <laughs> in Michigan. It's the Fantastic Con in Mount Clemens at the Gibraltar <laughs> Trade Center. <laughs> Uh, um, same weekend, Palm Springs, California. It's Palm Springs Comic Con, and also awesome, awesome ways of finding out what names are. But huh? the first time I ever heard someone say, "I know that town because I heard it on Cops before." I did. That's, that was awesome. The That's Beach cool. You can learn a lot from Cops. County Sheriff's Office. You can learn a lot from Cops. You, can, uh, you know. I guess so. If I'm ever going to get arrested, I'll make sure my shirt is off. Yeah. You hide underneath those kitty pool. Yeah, I'll have one shoe missing. I gotta find you under a kiddie pool. That's where it always ends up. Is that yeah? Or sandwich between two yeah. mattresses? Yeah. Let's see. Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Phoenix Fan Fest. That's November 11th and 12th, as well as the Saratoga Springs, uh, New York, Saratoga Comic Con, and that's at the Saratoga Springs City Center. Ooh, nice town, Saratoga Springs. Frederick, Maryland has Schaff Promotions. Frederick, Maryland Comic Con. That's November 12th. And that's at the Clarion Inn Frederick Event Center. Ooh. November 17th through the 19th in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. It's the Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention. Ooh, that does sound cool. Memphis Fantasy. Cook Convention Center down in Tennessee. Ooh. Overland Park, Kansas. It's the Kansas City Comic Book Convention at the Doubletree Hotel over on College Boulevard. That's November 18th. Wow. Same day, Fort Myers, Florida. It's the Southwest Florida Comic Con at the Holiday Inn Fort Myers Airport at Town Center. Fly in and fly right back out. November 18th, Annadale, Virginia. Schaff Promotions Comic Book and Non-Sports Card Show over at the Annadale Fire Station. I heard that show's going to be hot. Oh, we motion. need one of those air horn sound effects. <laughs> 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 Do you really? I do. If you want to no. <laughs> November 18th and 19th in Novo Livonia, Michigan. It's the Extravacon. That's a clever name. Extravacon. It uh, doesn't have a location oh, here, so you're going to have to Google it, kids. It's Extravaganza. Uh, same extravaganza. weekend in Edison, New Jersey. It's the New Jersey Comic Expo at the New Jersey Convention and Exposition Center. Ooh. Same weekend in Lebanon, Missouri. Lebanon Comic Con. That's the 18th and the 19th. The 19th, Omaha, Nebraska hosts the Omaha Comic Book Convention. You're going to have to look it up, kids. I don't have a venue for that. Tom Fury's show is that same day, November 19th, in New Haven, Connecticut, at the Annex YMA Club. It's the New Haven Comic and Collectible Spectacular. If you're in the Connecticut area, go say hi to Tom. He's a good friend. Big Star Wars fan. November 19th, Are Columbus. Are you going to be there for that? Huh? Are you going to be there? I don't know. Oh, okay. November 19th, Columbus, Ohio, the Buckeye Comic Con at the Courtyard Columbus West. Same day, the 19th, Mount Bethel, Pennsylvania, it's the Water Gap Comic Fest at the Mount Bethel Fire Company. Wow. 19th, over at Scranton. Scranton. Scranton, Pennsylvania, it's the Scranton Comic Con. Scranton Con. At the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel. 
Sponsored by Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Machine. Oh my god. <laughs> if you're watching the Facebook feed, you'd see all of our heads just drop. Scranton has more going on than the office, you know. It's true. It's the cousin of Wilkesbury. Trains? That's where Joe Biden came from. Yeah. It's also the cousin of like Wilkesbury, isn't it? It's like a sister city. Yeah, it's uh, very close. Wilkesbury, Scranton. That's like always... nothing about Yeah. Scranton. Yep. It's Claremont, Florida on the 19th. It's the Claremont Comic Con. And that's at the Claremont Performing Arts Center. Sounds like a nice place. Ooh. November 25th and 26th in St. Charles, Illinois. It's the Chicago Pop Culture Con at the Pheasant Run Resort. Mm, pheasants. Pheasant Run Resort slash Mega Center. Ooh, Mega Center. That's a little bit bigger. Um, November 25th through the 26th in Richmond, Virginia. It's the VA Comic Con at the Clarion Hotel Central. And my last show that I'm going to talk to is November 26th at the Plainville VFW over in Plainville, Connecticut. It's the Cliffs Con. It's Plainville. That's oh. November 26th. All those shows that are on the 26th, that's the Thanksgiving weekend. So be yes. on the lookout for that. So if you're going to go to your local convention center, bring family members. They may have a good time. They may. And that's my last entry oh. for the comic oh. report. That was a full-on comic report. Oh! Man, everything you need to know from the month of November for all your comic con needs. And if there are no you're show, on, if there are shows that you're not hearing about and you want us to announce it or if you host your own show, let us know about it. Yeah. Because we'd be happy but to share. But everything's on the website that we go to to rip the stuff off of. So we got to find other places. That's true. Or you could just let but us know. But speaking of uh, CliffsCon, which is coming up at the end of this month, which now we're in November, um, November 26th, uh, here's a little information about CliffsCon and uh, where you can check that out. So we're back with Storytime with Uncle Matt and a Q&A session. So we be back in just a bit. It is the free lunch. Comic news, 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 news. Hey, Chris Mortensen says hi. Two interesting comments uh, on the live feed. One was Jay asking why your hair isn't as nice as mine. Why is what? I think he said something along the lines of why isn't your hair as good as mine. Because my hair is off camera, for one. Yeah. And the other one was Brian somebody asking, yeah, asking if uh, you read the new Twin Peaks book yet. Oh. <laughs> This is an ongoing battle. Well, okay, well, so we'll get to that. We'll get to that as, in, in the question issue. segment. Do, All right, so I'll address that. And we got another question here, too. Brian, of course, got his, like, Monday. And he got delivered here Monday. Yeah, but he read it. All he said was, wow, Bob, wow. See, that's cool. Chris, did you have Costco? Two people still... Yeah, it's... You know, Chris, one of those people that really enjoyed my visit but didn't talk to me they actually told me at the Mohegan Sun show when it was time to leave which was really awkward they should have talked to me while I was there at the at the at the store which I really really caught me off guard but I think the big thing there is I think people when they're in work mode they get in work mode you know how that is um, but yeah, one of the one of these guys actually introduced himself, and I'm like, yeah, save, you, it, save it for the. No, I don't want to do it for the Q and A. I think Chris deserves the answer right now. He heard, yeah. I was like, yeah, I recognize the back of your head because you were watching the, uh, like the HGTV thing, which you know that's cool. Um, but there was you had one customer there. I had a great conversation with. Uh, I don't remember his name, but he was really engaging, and he was, you know, he had he had a lot to talk about. So that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Robert Kegler says, what's up, killers? It's Kegs from Kegs and Eggs. Uh, he's uh, one of our D&D guys. Oh, cool. D&D. We're just getting used to that. Oh, so sorry. For our Facebook listeners here. Uh, right now he's uh, getting the promo set up for the uh, the Cliffs Con, yes. uh, which is uh, Cliff Gourneau's show. He's been running for years out of the Plainville VFW. It's a great Ooh. show. You pay 99 cents to get in. You get coffee, donuts if you get there early enough. He does charge an advance entry fee. I think it's like five bucks mm. to get in before it opens to the public, which uh, some people do take advantage of. Yeah, some um, people do. But they get they get a lot of a lot of people in there. Uh, it's a good show. You want to buy comics? It's a real. It's, it's a, a box real. diver. It's a box diver show. Which it's Scott Pellet and Greg Collagen just held theirs this past weekend. Yes. You know, and I think <clears throat> excuse me, I think the rain. The pending storm kind of thwarted a, a decent amount of people from showing up, but that was a great show. It was. A lot of good stuff. 
Have you guys ever? Oh, it already went by. Donuts. Donuts. That's the way. That's the way. You can, <coughs> up, you know, can I, without screwing up the show? I think so. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Have you guys ever heard? Have you ever, guys, have you guys ever met Kane Jason Hodder? Uh, Sounds familiar. Plays, uh, I've never met him personally, but I've been at shows he's been at, and I've heard a lot of people saying he's a very nice guy. What does he do? He was Jason. Oh. Oh, the... In the Jason movies. Oh, oh, all right. His name was Kane Hodder, but they called him Kane Jason. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, he played the, the, I think from Jason 10 on, I think he's been... Jason, I'm not sure exactly. The most successful franchise, movie franchise ever, right? Yeah, yeah, one of them, yeah. Well, horror, maybe. Do you mean Jason 10 or, or X? X. X. Not oh, no. Jason 10. That was a fun one. Yeah. Jason one in X. space? Yeah. Yeah. Jason X. Looked like he was a Ninja Turtle, his mask. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the air in here. I always, no ha I always have a hard time in here. The problem is there is no air in here. That's the problem. There's no air moving. We gotta get a fan friend here or something. Uh, Chris says seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, well, there you go. So thanks, Chris. I know Chris would know. He's into that stuff. He's into that stuff. All right, so we're gonna jump back in for. We're getting back into story time with Uncle Matt. We're gonna tell oh. us something about something. All right, sure. And then we'll do a little bit of Q and A. All right, cool. God, a lot of Jason movies. A lot. Yeah, I, I didn't. There's gonna be more coming too. I hear too. Is that true? I dig it. I'd like to see a modern Jason. And we're back here on the Village Comic Book News, where it is now time for a segment that we've come up with when we don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> we can make Matt tell us stories about life as a comic book writer at different cons and different places. So we're going to turn that over to... Uh, Uncle Matt is going to tell us a little bit of uh, stories about the world. The world of uh, comic book artists. You know what? I, what, what I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about um, the uh, the Halloween. The uh, you know how we celebrate Halloween around the office. Yes. Um, it's it's a good story. It ends. It's kind of bittersweet. Okay. <laughs> but I'm getting over it. I, that was for the Facebook people. Yeah, that was. A... Um, I love Halloween. I know a lot of people do, and uh, every year we run the uh, King of Monster Mountain tournament, and we did that. We did that Thursday night for the drink and draw, and it was a spirited game. And we actually had this guy David, who came back to win his second time. He, you know, he didn't win last year, but he won it the year before. I had to let uh, Tim listen to the music we're playing in the background. Oh, you, you can't hear it. You can't hear it. It's, it's very, it's, 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 it is, it, it's, it's very moving. It's got a way more it really, emotional. Uh, it really sells how much you were following. Oh, <laughs> it's just so much. So we did the King of Monster Mountain tournament. It was great. Chris Vizakis was in there, and he, he gets so riled up. <laughs> he gets really. He really I've, does. I've heard he gets really intense. Oh my God, yeah. I watched a little bit of the Facebook Live, and I only watched about like five seconds into it. Chris was already yelling about something, so I knew it. It's it's a very spirited game. Uh, in a sense, it gets very intense. But it's fun. It's very competitive. That well, they're in, and they're competing. They're competing to win yeah. prizes. So it's We're it's a good time. For and this young this stuff. young lady, uh, Kelsey, she did really really. What do people well. get if they win? Like, what do you give them? I let them choose from different prizes. So, oh. um, what were some of the prizes this year? Uh, Batman. <clears throat> White Knight, which was one of the books we were reviewed. Yep. Um, Unholy Grail, number one. Ooh. Um, Motor Crush, number one. Mm -hmm. And a horror movie, The Witch, I think. Wow. Yeah. The so two Vs. The two V witch movie, yeah. yeah. So it was good. A very spirited game. I was the only one drinking, which was odd. No, oh. Hosway. I gave a drink to Hosway. Oh, Hosway. Yeah, yeah. So we did a King of Monster Mountain, and then we had Zombie Night the next night. Yeah. And that was very well attended, packed house. And I taught the students how to draw severed limbs and, you know, uh, you know, poor posture. It was a good time. And then Saturday we did the King of Monster Mountain a tournament again for well, kids. Was that a tough thing to, to learn how to not draw correctly, kind of, with posture? 
Well, that's a big thing in your... In well, it's, your, still, it's still rooted in... When you're training, when you do the training things, you're very mm-hmm. adamant about the posture thing. Posture is big. So is that like a tough thing for them to learn to go from used to having to draw a like, good posture and then forcing it to be a bad posture? With some... Is it more with, difficult than that? I, I think that... I understand where you're going. A lot of people, when they get stuck and they're just drawing people just standing, like perfectly rigid all the time... Yeah. Uh, with the upright posture, mm. I think that it can be a tough transition. But once they get used to it, I think I think it does a lot for them. Um, Sorry, I was trying to expand upon that. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. But no, I, I think when you know if they you know if they start drinking the Kool Aid, you know, and they start kind of buying yeah. into what I'm trying to give them, uh, you know, it, in certain places, you know, I'll run into challenges where people are like, oh no, that's not really how it works, and it's like, okay, go read your drawing book. Right. And then come I have, I have then found come slouching to be like a fun kind of drawing exercise. Absolutely. Because the body does a lot of really interesting things. Slouching so while drawing or just drawing people slouching? Yeah, so. and, uh, yeah. No, yeah. No, <laughs> people like, slouching. Ooh, I slouch all the time. Ooh. It's because um, you're a tall guy. Yeah. yeah, but drawing people that are slouched, you, there are things you see like coming like forward or like moving back that you like you never really mm. think about. It's true. And it's, it's interesting. It's good. It adds a lot to what you're trying to convey. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool, very cool. So we did Zombie Night. We did the King of Monster Mountain for the kids. And we had two sisters working together. So you were saw me, yeah. And they, they did very, very well. Well, they were the Jessica and, 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 the Shining. And I was really angry at the boys. Because the girls said, right in the beginning of the tournament, they said, let's just get all the boys out and settle it. Wow. And the boys didn't make an alliance. They didn't do anything. And I'm like, what? And I can't tell them anything. Boys mature slower than girls do. That's why. Idiots. The girls are smarter. They really, And he said, we're going we're gonna to destroy I mean, I'm them. Gonna, I'm not going to lie about that. Girls yeah. are always smarter at all. So that made me sad. And I cried a little bit after that. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really <laughs> hurt your feelings. If someone I'm trying to it. sell it here. No, I don't cry when it's over. I'm like, woo, Halloween's almost over. But no, I, I, about, but I love it. But besides this, the, you're talking about the King of Monster Mountain. Now, the King of Monster Mountain is a comic book that you've drawn. Uh, well, it's, it's a, also a it's board a, game. It's a game inside a comic. Yes. Yep. But when you play it at your, at your place, the one that you get with a comic book is only about well, how big? It's like uh, if you put three comics side by side, okay. cover to cover. So um, that's the size like, of the game board, but so it's, like three it's pretty feet, three, three feet long, maybe almost. Yeah, it's now, pretty big. Now, what do you use at the shop it's when you play? Six foot by eight feet. Yeah, so it's way bigger. Oh, and I can outfit a lot more players. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to convey to people that it's not just you're not playing on the small little version. Of no, game. no, so, and and yeah. honestly, the official tournament has been around longer than the comic game. Oh. We've been running the the tournament since I believe 2009. Well, that's really taken off too. It's it's very fun. It's, it's, it's become it's, saying, it's become the, its own thing. Besides the night, but also the actual book itself. It's true. It's taken off at different events we've done. Lately. It's true. It's been a lot. It's been a hot seller. We have a lot of fun with it. I just had a new set of books printed up and game boards. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it it holds a special part in our hearts. You know, we always mm. talk about it. You know, and um, a, a true sign of it picking up speed and picking up relevance is. I feel like we talk about it all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, so now it's getting to the point where it's it's up there with bigger and with food fighting. Yeah. It's just another one of those things. You yeah. said you had returning kids come and you had new features to show them and they oh, lost yes. it. Oh, yeah. They were yeah. so excited. Yeah, which was cool. Yeah. Which was cool. And one of our viewers, I actually saw her check in. She was one who played during the adult tournament. She picked up all three of those enhancements. Mm. So that's something that I'm thinking about adding to the actual game, too, as like a little booster card yeah. set. So Like a free download kind of thing? Something. Like expansion pack? Yeah, yeah. I want it to look like it belongs there, yeah. you know? So glossy card stock. Ooh. Maybe a couple of rule changes. Maybe some new character cards. Oops, sorry. Oh, yeah, so, you know. So that it, was your Saturday. That was Saturday, and then Sunday we had the show. Yeah. And that was nice. Where well, you met that nice gentleman, Raymond Moore. Oh, yeah, he's a, he, he is nice. by the booth and yeah, talked to Yeah, he was a nice guy. Drawing. Yeah. And I hope he and stays he with had, it. he like, a lot of cool, like, the stuff he was drawing was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. And he's self-taught, and he's, it seems like he's just Sketch starting artist. to do it. Yeah, and he's yeah. doing it. I like that. I love, I love it when people show me their work, and we can yeah. talk about it a little bit. I enjoy that a lot. Do you not do that stuff by Monday? No, he did not. Uh, which is probably good. Great segue, though. Um, 
Monday was absolute chaos. So Tim, Ooh. Tim, it was Tim's first great candy swap, <clears throat> right? Before uh, that, we had Sunday. We had the show. And as always, Scott put on a great show. Him and, uh, Greg and, and Scott do a really good job. Yeah, we yeah. have lots and lots of fun. It's a great venue. Yeah. It's a great venue. Um, Former Chester's, now a Golden Gavel auction house. Yep. It's good times. It is, it is a good times. Next one's in February. Yes. And he's always in February and October. Yeah. Valentine's and, and Halloween. Halloween. Good place to be. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, Monday at the old. Uh, Candy swap. The great candy swap. It was awesome. Everybody, you know, we drew, uh, we drew uh, candy inspired creatures, and then we did the great candy swap for the I second half. Candy corn. Yep. A lot of kids. Well, some of the kids dressed up. I would say half. And then uh, here's the true sad part. No, only one adult really dressed up for the adult jam this year. Was that Kylie? No, it wasn't. No. She had a meeting. That's why. Well, and that's and I understand that. Yeah. Like. Um, but it was funny to have. Uh, it was it was interesting. Like last year, almost one hundred percent of the adults that showed up dressed up. Mm. So you know, people are getting busy. Maybe things are going. I don't mean it that way. <laughs> people have busy people lives. Get busy. People get busy. They ain't got time to dress up. Got time to dress up. Between that and I'm looking at Todd Zavorkas just joined our live feed, and I thought it said, "Todd Zavorkas says the hell with you." <laughs> oh. <laughs> but he just started watching there us, which go. is nice. Um, no, but it was it was good, you know, and uh, I, I was glad that this young lady dressed up, and we'll we'll push it a little harder. Uh, no, we should remind oh God, people. that sounds I'm terrible. Sure. I'm really saying a lot of inappropriate. Just gonna things. remind people. That's all. You're We're gonna remind more people. Yeah, maybe do a custom contest as well. Incentive. We'll work harder. Yes. To make sure. Faster, stronger, better than ever before. That we dress appropriately. All right. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> well, now it's time for uh, Q and A. We're going to do it. We're doing it. We're jumping into well, Q&A. This is your chance, if you're on <coughs> Facebook Live, right now as we're recording the show, where you have a chance to ask Matt anything you would like about comic books. Oh, my goodness. This is not a question. And says, Matt sounds a lot like Mr. T. What? He's a fool. You don't ask a question. You don't come here dressed appropriately. You don't talk about my mama that way. My mama. I ain't getting no plane. Here's I'm one. I'm talking about him. one. I ain't getting no plane. Remember that big tribute he did to his mama for... Get that crazy guy away from me. The Wrestling Hall of Fame. Wasn't yes. that awesome? Yeah. Got a mama chant. All right, so first question. You ready, boys? Animal, get that crazy man away from me. Here, I'm going to find your first question. Okay. Your first question... Oh, God. First uh, question. It's the Flash costume question. <coughs> oh, yes, yes. That we this toyed with a little bit on drink. the Facebook Live, but we're going to yes. address it now. So, boys, this is for you. <coughs> Fla yeah. The Flash costume. What's the deal? Which one is better? The Flash costume, they're asking which costume is better. The one from the TV show on the CW or the new Justice League version of the Flash costume. I will take the CW version. It is more like the comic book and I like that one better. Uh, I think the one in the Marvel or the DC movie. Uh, Justice League is a little bit too flamboyant and over the top. It's more of like a... a I want to say like uh, a flash, like add-on, like some kind of like flash plus two, like metal or something. Kind flash of like point two. four. Yeah, like it would be a side story. Yeah, exactly. It's oh. not like the nat like a natural flash outfit. Like an alternate yeah. timeline. It's like one that's like almost like a uh, like an alter yeah alternate timeline. Ooh. Slash like something that like was made for him by like Bruce Wayne or something. It's got more of like a. <laughs> oh, Tim, like Tim's well, got his finger up. That means something. I do believe it is made by Bruce Wayne. Is that how it works in, in the, the movie? In the movie, because he's the one that comes to him and he's like, hey man, Justice League. And he's like, yeah, dude. So he, I, that's what I think it is. Do so you think he has the generic costume at the beginning? I doubt it. I, I or he's just running around really fast. I think he t-shirt runs around really fast. I also have no idea. Um, but that's cool, though. I think for the movie, <coughs> the costume fits in well with everybody else because we got cyborg in his metal outfit yeah everybody else is armored and yeah. stuff and he's just kind of in a spandex suit going fast. i just hope it's good that's all i'm hoping for yeah yeah all right i don't think i don't think one is better than the other i think they convey, no they're different they just, convey different things about the character if you're like going more comic book looking i like the tv show version more yeah yeah all right next question okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this okay. is from Jay Miller. 
Why doesn't Matt? Why doesn't your hair look like Tim's? Well, Tim's one person and Matt's a different person, and genetically, it's impossible to have the same kind of hair. He's got a lot of flow stuff going on over yeah. here. Tim has a lot of product, whereas Matt's hair is just naturally buoyant. It takes a solid. Buoyant. Buoyant. Yeah. It's very buoyant. You have like a pomp pompadour thing going. I put pompadour. It does get some air. Yeah. It does get air. Right. Yeah, it's got some heft to it. I, on the other hand, cannot get my hair to go above like this level. It's always been like hmm. low and just there. That's what the product's for. Get the product. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sniff around here for other questions. So Thank you for product. those two. Um, Matt, did you get to read that? What? From Brian Kazaska, this is the guy who hosts the Twin Peaks Unwrapped show. And he got the preview version of it. The book just came out today for regular people. It's a new you book. You know what, Brian? Let's talk about what this book's about first before you just start yelling at Brian about it. I will. I'm going to tell you something, mister. <laughs> uh, getting all Mr. T on it. This is awesome. This is the follow-up file collection to... The um, final dossier, I believe it's called. Yeah. The, so the, the book that came out at the beginning of the year was The uh, Secret History of Twin Peaks. And I'm happy to say that Tim now is fully immersed in his intern responsibilities. Uh, Elise Perrin, you'll appreciate this. He's watching Twin Peaks. He's actually watching episode by episode now the new stuff, which is great. I get to watch the new Twin Peaks during lunch. And so the new book, I know that they pre-delivered uh, to a lot of the Amazon subscribers that ordered it. Uh, but now it's available to the or if you were given a copy by the publisher because you're uh, or that too because I heard Mark interviewed Mark Frost either today or they're doing it I believe Thursday they might be doing it is that this week yeah cool. uh, that's pretty yeah. amazing to be able to get that kind of feedback immediately so no Brian I haven't read it yet but I'm glad you have Brian is the host of the Twin Peaks Unwrapped podcast he's also the host of Economics with me on Mondays. Just had the guys from Paranormal. That's right. What do you, you guys did Tyler a paranormal, paranormal show? Did you on talking about uh, what they do? Yeah. Did he name any buildings that he did any searches in? He did. He did. I don't remember any of them, but he did. Brian was very into it. Brian's all about that stuff. <laughs> Brian has experiences from his childhood. That's why he's more into it than I am. Here's a question: Did you guys dress up for Halloween? This is from Robert Kegler. Kegs, I did. If you go to uh, my girlfriend's oh, Facebook page, that's great for all the listeners um, who know who your girlfriend is. Well, I, I there are a few. I'll post it on our <laughs> free lunch comic community page. Hey, uh, what'd night, you dress up as, Mark? Last night I got a text from my uh, girlfriend. We moved to a new place, and uh, we had no trick or treaters, and she was very depressed about it because she was really excited about Halloween. That's one of her favorite holidays. So I stopped on the way home at the local Walgreens in the area. And grab the cheap uh, Darth Vader mask and lightsaber and trick or treat it at the house. Is this Darth taking Vader. a dirty turn? No, this, that's all I do. Is this a different podcast? I, I even played the, the Imperial March on my cell phone. I still feel like it's taking a turn. As I walked a turn. up to the door, oh and my she God. was very excited. She this was very happy. She was very thankful. Whoa, well, yeah. There was no, no naughty stuff happened whatsoever. Okay. It was just, you know, me being a nice guy. That was too adorable for naughty stuff to not happen afterwards. Oh, oh Tim. Did yeah. you dress up, Tim? Uh, no. Tim dressed up as a, Tim's always dressed up as... Tim was working on his hair. Yeah. yeah you coolest know. guy in the room. That's I was going to dress up, but uh, my hair just wasn't cool. <laughs> He's wearing a scarf when it's only 40 degrees outside. I got, heck cold. I got heckled the other day, Tim, because you weren't in class by... Uh, by the, the, the girls? The yeah, the girls. private students. <laughs> the girls were happy. They were heckling. Where's Tim? We Where? want you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Tim's not here. We're upset. Where's 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 New Matt? Care to hold New you? Matt. New Matt. That's terrible. Tim. How about you, Matt? Uh, did you dress up at all? I know you just scared your children. I had a place. skull mask that I was rocking throughout the day yeah. at different points. So I would wear it during the kids' jam a little bit. And then Ghost Rider? It kind of, but like, but with the spiral horns on the side. Uh -huh. And then when I, when we were when we were hosting the party for the kids, I had my my hoodie sweatshirt, and then I would put the hood on, so could, kids couldn't tell. And then I would turn around and scare you know, them. Yeah, scare the crap out of them. I had yeah. a costume planned with my girlfriend. We were going to go as these two characters. Mm -hmm. Who was that going to be? Uh, Tom Aquaman. Was, was Aquaman be, and Aqua Girl. No, that's next year. I um walk around with a I was like Tombo a... and she was Kiki. Who are Tombo and Kiki? From a Studio Ghibli oh. production. Oh. Yeah. What happened? She backed up? I was sick. So. Uh, <laughs> how convenient. Yeah. 
Uh, Any other questions? Yeah. We've got uh, we've got a question from Rocky telling me to shut up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice, Rock. Thanks. Thanks, Rocky, for tuning in. Solid so feedback from the Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that was that's great. Now Thanks we, for trolling. We've got Ange jumping in. Flash looks lumpy in the movie trailer. <laughs> yes, and he looks like he mumbles a lot too. But very. Well, he talks really fast, right? Yeah, Shouldn't, yeah. Shouldn't he talk fast? I guess so. I don't like the actor. <coughs> he was he was I don't the kid. Want to go too deep down the rabbit hole. But I don't yeah. like he was the kid in um, no, Fantastic Beasts, right? Was he? No. I thought he was. I thought no. he was like the monster kid, wasn't he? I don't think so. I don't remember. I fell asleep there in that movie in the theater. Oh, you're talking about the kid who was the. Uh, yes, you were correct. It was the kid. He was the kid that was the the one that was the ghost monster. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You were correct. Yeah. He's got a very punchable yeah. face. Oh God! He yeah. does have a very punchable face. I said it. You Even during Fantastic face. Beasts, I said that. I go, that yeah. looks like a guy I want to punch in the face for a yeah. lot of times. And then he popped up on the Justice League thing. I'm like, well, now I really want to punch him in the face. Yeah. Plays in a DC movie. So we'll be broadcasting. It's weird when Rocky's telling number. me to shut up because it's a, I'm talking about DC. But why me? I didn't say anything bad about DC. No, did he, I? Just gets, he just gets amped and he just can't control himself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We have our own heckler. Yeah. That's a good sign. Go back to doing nothing. <laughs> Go back to watching bad DC Yes, movies. he was. What is? I don't know what Josh is uh, saying. Talking about Ezra Miller. Yeah, Ezra Miller. Was Fantastic in, Beast. That's his name? Fantastic Beast. Yeah. He's in the room next to us researching for us. Our research department. Yeah. Located in Walla Walla, Washington. Well, he needs to do a better job because this is, you know, All right. well, six pieces of paper. That's it for Q&A. That's it for story time. We'll come back with the free lunch menu. Oh, well, no, we got the comic watch next, but thanks anyways. Oh, dang. Well, I don't know about that. we got to speed it up here. All right, so we'll be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back. And I'll be back with a little information about the guys from Giganomics. It is the free lunch comic news. Thanks for the questions, everybody. Credence Barebone. All right. That's cool. Man. Thanks, Josh. So, yeah, we went off the rails a little bit there for story time, but right Michigan. now they we're doing an ad for Geekonomics, which is the 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 uh, the founding the, of the, all those shows. the founding podcast, Geekonomics, yes. which is the, uh, you Geekonomics know, they talk... podcast network. You want to do it? Take it. We talk all things nerd every Monday. Uh, we'll be doing a show tomorrow night. Actually, right after we go see Thor Ragnarok, we're doing a live show from a local eatery that's open 24 hours a day. We'll be talking about uh, Thor Ragnarok, telling our uh, live review of the movie right after we watch it. I'm going to be back Monday with uh, getting ready for Justice League, which is the next thing up. And we'll talk about other stuff as well. So, When does Justice back. League open? I want to say the 17th. Wow, crazy. Yeah, so it's like one after the other. Then a month from that is Star Wars. And they also do the Twin Peaks Unwrapped podcast. They yes. also do Dungeonetics, which is their real-time yes. Dungeons & Dragons uh, role-play over-the-shoulder yes. watch. We just recorded another one last week. <coughs> it's going to be a long gap now because Bobby, who is just on the uh, Facebook Live, is uh, going to be having another child soon. Bobby so is. This will be his third child, so uh, we're going to give a little bit of a break for the holidays and everything and probably... Won't play again until probably January. But we're going to try maybe possibly to slide in a... Uh, no, you're not. Monster Mountain. No, you're not. Yeah. We've said that for three months. I know, but I think that's actually what we're going to try to do. But anyways, it's time for the comic watch. Woo! We'll go, All right. You'll be cool. We'll go I'll go slide. first. I'll start Maybe it off. Tim, the I don't have any. You don't have any? I didn't look at the book. No worries. Yeah. Well, I've got, I've got a couple. Tim. I'll just talk about the book. Books I like. <laughs> Alright, there's a new Aquaman that looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Alright, hit Weird. it. Alright. Welcome back to Free Lunch Comic News. Oh, I picked up the first issue, and uh, I really liked it so far. 
Uh, the tough thing about reading that is it's probably going to be another big, big story. Um, mm -hmm. The Thor Archie Digest has hit the stands, which I really like a lot. Well, I went through it. It was really good. You read all of it? That's, there's a lot of content in there, so that's it pretty. Is. it's pretty awesome. Uh, the Wonder Woman Conan crossover is continuing. Uh, the second issue just hit the stands a couple weeks ago. And... Uh, Trying to think, the uh, you know I gave it away at the King of Monster Mountain tournament. The Batman White Knight, man, that's a really cool book. Um, that's Joker as a, a good guy, right? Yeah, cool so it, it's really gorgeously yeah. drawn by uh, by and written and drawn by the uh, by uh, Sean Murphy, who did the uh, the Wake. Uh, he was Ooh. the artist on the Wake. Very very talented artist. Um, I know Marvel's doing a lot of those uh, lenticular covers right now. I think a lot of people are going nuts for that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, the Twin Peaks, the final dossier there. Uh, I would think that's something to be excited about, but I don't think that's going to show up in many comic stores. So for you guys that are picking up graphic novels over at Barnes & Noble when they come out, you would see that there. So that kind of gets my uh, my big shout-out. Other than that, um, that's it for me. Those three, right? The, the, the freebies and, and those free, those. Those, uh, I know that one of the freebies that Marvel put out was the Walter Simonson uh, Thor Hella book, which was really, really good. I think it was reprinting Thor number 453, maybe? Wow. God, if I got that right, that would be awesome. That's impressive. If it did. Yeah. So there you have it. Those are my picks. What do you got, Mark? Actually, Tim's got a pick he's going to talk about. Oh, he about. does? I'm talking about uh, Aquaman number 29. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm a little behind on the whole Aquaman series, but I'm all about supporting Aquaman because he is greatly underappreciated. Uh, there's a really cool cover that I'm looking at right here by, how do you say that? Stapen Sejic? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Let me, yeah. Let me look at it with my glasses here. Yeah. Coming with uh, two variant covers. Jeez, I have no one idea. Other Sejic, cover. though. Wow, that's we'll a tough first to Facebook if you want one. But the variant cover is Josh Milton. Uh -huh. yeah. There you go. Gee, thanks. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> that's what I got. Hawkman is my go-to. Nice. Let's take a look at that for people on the oh, yeah. Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah, I'll hold that up for the Facebook Live. Facebook Live viewing. It's dark, but we you can see it. Yeah. There you go. So that's pretty cool. It's on the shelves right now. So another uh, stuff since uh, I'll take over from here, since you guys have already done yours. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, uh, I saw a couple of these toys at the show on Sunday. Oh, a toy? And it uh, made me think about how awesome the comic was. Oh. The cartoon was back in the day. And it's uh, Matt's First Strike Number 1. Writer is Aubrey Sitterson. Artist is Elias Curiosis. Sure. Mm, Curiosis. Uh, Curiosis is an immaculate. Covers by uh, Drew Johnson, Elias, uh, like we said before. And Humberto Ramos. Oh. Uh, Venom's showdown with the G.I. Joe team continues as transforming vehicles, robotic ninjas, and explosions threaten to bring their mission to a deadly end. Tying to the events of First Strike, a Hasbro comic book event, the second part of G.I. Joe and Masks story continued from last month's G.I. Joe First Strike number one. Uh, it is Mask, the Mobile Armored Strike Command. And they got a whole bunch of cool stuff in there. I used to love that com uh, cartoon back in the day. I know a couple of our listeners actually uh, really enjoy that series, that First Strike crossover. I heard series. it's a very big thing. I heard it's very popular. Uh, speaking of cartoons I love back in the day, uh, Voltron, Legendary Defender. Two issues of Voltron, Legendary Defender are out this month. The Pilgrimage Part 1, Voltron, Legendary Defender returns. Voltron responds to a distress call and discovers a group of alien settlers on a mining planet under attack by the... Galera. Sure. But the attempted rescue is only the beginning of a more exciting Voltron adventures from Tim Hedrick, Hedrick and Mitch Iverson, writers on the hit DreamWorks series on Netflix. So that book is out. There's two of those out. Uh, I'll be out in the coming days and weeks, so you can check those out. Um, and then one more, Mark. You got one more one cherry more? pick? Yep. I got three more. Uh, I'm sorry. One more. We got we to gotta move oh, on. Okay, hold on. He's going to pick a very special one. Very, very uh, special. Punisher the Platoon. This was on his comic pick from yes. last month. Punisher the Platoon number one and two of prior, six. Prior episode. Gareth Innes is the writer. Goran Parlov is the artist and colorist. Variant covers by Steve McNiven and Andy Brass. A How to Draw variant cover by Chip Zard Zard Zardarsky. Zardarsky. Yep. 
variant cover by Scott Hepburn. Uh, by the time the Punisher was born in Vietnam, Frank Castle had already become a dark legend in the battlefield. Stories about him were told in whispers, if at all. Not a legendary Punisher team of Garth Ennis and Gorin Parlov, a Punisher Max Fury Max fame brings the first of those stories to light. The tale of Frank Castle's first command and his first kill. Don't miss this epic new series, 32 pages. It is out now. Yeah, it looks like you got two issues that are hitting the stands at the same time. Yes, one and two of six. So you're getting two books a month. I love that. That's yes. Cool. That's it, Mark. No more. Got to pull it. the plug. All right. Also, Darth Vader number six, uh, <laughs> the Inquisitors, which I'm excited about. Darth That's Vader and the Inquisitors is going to be an epic. So thank book. you. So check those out. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I want to I want to say thank you to, to Mark and to Tim. For yes. being here today to help uh, help in putting this show together. No if problem. you have anything you want to find out about Free Lunch Comics, you can go to freelunchcomics.com. You can find Free Lunch Studios on Facebook. Yes. You can find this podcast on Podbean. You can find it on Free Lunch Studios' uh, Facebook page. You can find it on the Free Lunch Comic News Facebook page. Uh, oh my God, it's on the Free Lunch Studios YouTube page. Uh, you can send any of us an email or hit us through our Twitter. Or we're on the Free Lunch Comic News is on Facebook. Uh, is also on Twitter and is on, uh, like you said, YouTube. So you can hit yeah, all those things, <laughs> and you can uh, get us uh, anything you want. Any questions? We will be in Albany this Sunday. Matt and I, not working. We'll be actually roaming the, the aisles, just hanging out. I'll be working. So well, I know he'll be we'll working, around. but you know what I mean. We're not. We don't have a booth. I'm saying. And if you're going to that writers conference down at Bethany, uh, we're going to be there too. Yeah. So check that out. All right. So thank all you very much, more, everybody. And, uh, if you have any questions about where Freelance is going to be. Give us a shout or check out the webpage, and you can check it out. We're starting to get a chance to get to the menu this week. But no uh, as always, free lunch is very busy, and Matt has to go teach someone how to draw. So we can't talk anymore. Thanks to all the Facebook viewers. Bye, everybody. Yes, bye, everybody. See you all yes. next time Yo, for the free lunch Bye -bye. comic book news.